easy as we can. One D motion, okay? Rectilinear means straight line motion, all right? We are, so 1D, right? Now we are concerned with positive and, and negative, uh, but we're not concerned with left, right, up, down, uh, just 1D motion. Uh, so we're not gonna have, right now, we're not gonna have I's and J's, you know, uh, we're just one dimension. All right, I don't know how you did it in physics, uh, but in this class, we're gonna say position is S, velocity is V, acceleration is A. Uh, and so what's, what's our definition for velocity? Uh, maybe change in position over change in time. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of our, our high school uh, version of definition of velocity. That's average velocity, okay? That's our average velocity. Uh, but I think you know that the uh, a good uh, the instantaneous velocity is the derivative, right? So this is the instantaneous velocity. This is what you're familiar with. This is what we're going to do in this class, majority of the time. The derivative of position is our velocity. Y'all, y'all knew that, right? All right. And uh, if I don't do this much, the book does some. Other teachers do this more than I do. If if we were to plot the s the position curve the st curve if we were to plot the st curve the velocity would be the slope right because the derivative is the slope is the derivative so um the derivative uh position would be velocity and if we were looking at position as a function on, on a graph uh the slope would be the velocity uh acceleration is the derivative of velocity the well, well, sorry, sorry, let, let me first, let's say, uh, the average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time, uh, but the instantaneous acceleration would be the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And so this would be the slope of the VT curve. Slope of the VT curve. All right, that's easy. We, we can't mess up uh, derivatives. Hopefully, uh, don't forget, uh, you know, the, don't, you are too smart to forget how to do derivatives. There's a few of them I'll, I'll remind you of in just a minute. Um, <laughs> but I think a little bit more difficult is going backwards. Uh, what if we were given acceleration and we want to find velocity? All right, so, 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 so if we're given position and we want to find velocity, we want to find acceleration, if we're kind of going this direction, Position to velocity to acceleration, we're taking derivatives, right? But if we're going from acceleration, you want velocity, you, you would integrate, right? You take, take an integral. Uh, this is how I do it. Uh, we'll see if you, you like it or not. But the integral, V is like the integral of dV. All right, V is like the integral of dV. And that would be the integral of acceleration with respect to time integral of acceleration with respect to time. So here's kind of my side note. Uh, if we know that acceleration is dv dt, uh, because of separations of variables, we can almost treat dv dt like a fraction. We can multiply dt to the other side of the equation. So we would get a dt equals dv, and to solve this, we would integrate both sides. So that's where it, it, it came from. So it's not really new. It's not really different than the uh, derivative. I just like to write it right there as an integral. And look on your formula sheet. I've actually given it, it to you both ways, as a derivative and an integral. All right. <clears throat> and similarly, we would say the integral of ds is the integral of v dt. Uh, the integral is not the slope of a line what is the integral the area under the curve area under the curve so if we were to plot the acceleration plot the area under would be the velocity v area under vt curve okay I, I do these as definite integrals, all right? 
I do these as definite integrals. Um, that way, I don't have a constant of integration when I do my integrals. Okay? You could do it as indefinite integrals, and you would need to remember that plus c on the right-hand side of your equation. Okay? And so we'll, we'll see, and I'll show how your plus c, if you do it as an indefinite integral, is going to be my v initial if I do it as definite integrals. Um, you do either way. I'm going to do them as definite integrals that have, right, you know what I mean? So that has, it goes from v initial to v final, t initial to t final, right? They have ranges. That t goes from t final minus t initial, right? Okay, I'll show how we do that. So let's